Good afternoon, everyone. The global sea temperature and snow update for November. As you can see, the oceans are cooling in every single ocean. When we take a look at the northern hemisphere, first week of December forecast for snow, see how far it goes south. Anomalies over double the normal snowfalls. Cold weather really starting to take a grip across the northern hemisphere. And that's going to be storm after storm pounding the United States with that cold blob. Definitely looking for multiple feet of snow by the first week of December. Already in New York, looking at 34 inches, which is almost three feet. Even when we come down into Vermont, Connecticut, still looking at 25 inches, two feet. Freeze alert across the entire Southeast United States. Taking a look at the Nino regions, La Nina definitely showing itself now. As 70 mile per hour gusting winds drop snow in the UK. Taking a look at Europe, Spain's even getting up to a couple inches of snow. Kazakhstan at a complete standstill because of the blizzards there. And please remember to press that subscribe button. As the media will have you believe it's the warmest year ever and keeps focusing on warm events, let's come over and I'm going to show you what my take on the entire global surface temperature sets show from my end. Taking a look at the anomalies across the entire oceans, the cold blob, North Pacific, La Nina definitely kicking in, south of Australia, south of Africa, Indian Ocean cool. And all the time they're talking about warming sea surface temperatures. The only place it's really warming is near Hainan Island, down near Vietnam. That little bit off Kenya there in Africa, but everywhere else, as you see, it's cooling down. Off of South America, coastal Brazil, Argentina, also showing cooler waters. I circled there that cold blob that is going to bring extra moisture-laden and cool air across the United States. You can see why Japan's having record snows, cool water around there. Zooming in on the cold blob and La Nina at the same time, United States, Coastal, and Mexico, Baja in the top right. Taking a look at the MODIS satellite, those curling arms are going to be exactly what's passed through dropping snow and dropping temperatures again and again and again. As we get into December, multiple feet of snow expected. This is forecast out to December 7th. The amount of snowfall that will be falling at the minimum in these locations. And we come across and look at the October snow totals. Some of those are even double what the previous records were, especially around Greenland. Oh yeah, it's not losing as much ice as everybody at the IPCC continually to spout. Also Eurasia, extra cold this year, 50 degrees below normal temperatures. Snow extent for November 21st across the Northern Hemisphere. When we do take a look at the temperatures, which I keep hearing again and again, how the Arctic is record warm. You know what? That teal color is at least 12 degrees Celsius below zero. So it sure looks like the Arctic is completely frozen to me. And when we look down across the continental United States, if the Arctic's not below freezing and the entire United States is almost below freezing, I would say 75% of the entire United States below freezing, the Arctic is totally frozen. So this garbage about it's the heat wave up in the Arctic, please open your mind to the real data presented to you. It's, it's become a religion, this global warming, CO2 hype. We got freeze warnings all the way down to Louisiana. Freezing temperatures in the panhandle of Florida. Freeze warnings and alerts across the entire Southeast United States. The polar vortex pushing. And they're still yapping on about the Arctic being in a heat wave. Lake effect snows deep. Let's take a look at some of the totals up to 37 inches through the Vermont area. Pennsylvania. Almost a foot across the entire area. Minimum a foot. More Ohio, Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Hampshire. And Connecticut totals for you. And the only thing I don't like about these snowfall reports is they don't show you where the records have been broken. Because everything I've read, 
These New York snows that are in the three-foot range are extremely early, and they have been breaking records, but they just don't indicate exactly which ones they are. But those of you basking in your t-shirts a couple of days ago saying how the winter's never going to come, well, this is exactly what happens in a grand solar minimum. The seasons get mixed up, rapid fire fronts come through, and you get four seasons in a day. Longer winters, rainier springs, snows, and then it gets hot, and then it snows again, and it gets warm, and it snows again on our crops. Upstate New York looking at least a foot. And when we come out to the December 7th forecast again, Canada and the continental United States surely going to get several feet of snow as we roll through these days. Looking out to December in the long-term forecast, 30 days all the way out to December 20th, that snow just keeps coming and coming and coming, and every time it's another foot and another foot and another foot, it's going to be feet of snow on the ground by December. Jumping over to the Nino, Equatorial Pacific, taking a look right next to South America there, Nino 1 and 2, cooling. Taking a look at Nino 3, rebounded a little bit, but it's flat, it's probably going to go cool again, since we are getting into La Nina. 3.4, rebounded a little off the cooling, but starting to cool again. Nino 4, it's going to level off, but start cooling. Speaking of gargantuan snow totals already, Kazakhstan, this is the second blizzard they've had. Kyrgyzstan has had two blizzards as well so far. Far, far, far above normal totals in early snows. Minus 38 still across Central Asia and Russia, parts of Mongolia. Then we jump over to the UK. Snows across the north. Hurricane force winds, 70 mile per hour plus gusts. Whipping in on itself, reversing, coming back east to west from west to east. People snowed in. And look how the tail just whips through there pulling right over to Spain, snow on the mountains, and the snow totals through the Scandinavian countries, along with Iceland, early and heavy. And with all these anomalous snows, you can just imagine that our spring planting season is going to be pushed off by weeks, if not months, because the rains are going to come, as they always do in a grand solar minimum. It's going to be cool. And look for the crop prices to start going up. We have a little surplus right now, but wait until this year. Australia just lost 90% of its wheat production. I encourage you to jump over to Trade Genius, talk to Bob, talk to them about the strategies and how they're trading on the grand solar minimum and the losses that are going to be incurred year upon year from this point forward. The 90% loss in Australia should be a wake-up call to everybody. Our agriculture is incredibly vulnerable. And we should be preparing. And IPCC, I'm going to say shame on you. You are going to let so many people starve to death and kill each other in the streets. You are going to be responsible for the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. We should have been preparing our agriculture. And this grand solar minimum is here. And all these gamut of scientists coming out and saying it's going to intensify all the way to 2060. We're going to get a brief respite around 2035 somewhere. And it's going to drop back off even cooler. This is going to be two cycles in a row. This is going to be as intense as the Maunder Minimum. 25% of the world's population perished from malnutrition and disease and starvation and cold during that time. We need to wake up right now and start getting ready for this. And IPCC, you need to be talking about climate change going cool. Your whole global tax system, yeah, great. Keep on that. But you need to warn the people, tell them what's really happening. And the rest of your minions through these weather stations that keep purporting this, everything's the warmest year ever, which it's not. You don't even have temperature stations in many of the places that showed record warming, Noah. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and I'll keep more information like this coming to you.